Okay, everybody, welcome back to the extra materials. What we're going to be looking at now is kind of a little bit more difficult, but still certainly something that you will likely end up using in your game in some capacity. We're going to look at how we can make our characters do a little bit more, how we can give them health, how we can display that health and that personal information on screen, and how we can have random spawning added into our game so we can have more than just the traditional however many enemies you set up. We can have it so it's a continuous wave that we're going to have to overcome. We're going to start with player health. Currently the game is over once you get hit once, which isn't particularly good for our purposes. So we're going to look at our spaceship and we're going to see how this currently works. Now in our spaceship just contains the instructions for moving left and right and intersecting our boundary as well as shooting. It's all in the enemy laser, is that instruction. So when the enemy laser touches the enemy spaceship, currently we're restarting the game. We're going to massively overhaul how this works. Now, the first thing that we're going to do, the first thing we're going to overhaul, is remove that bit there where we've got the collision with the spaceship from the enemy laser. We're going to take that out of there for no other reason than we're going to pull it in with the enemy uh, with the player spaceship so it's all consistently in one location. So we're going to add a new event and we're going to use the create event. The thing that we're going to create here is not a move, it's not going to be an action, it's just going to be the setting up of a variable. Now we've used variables already, we've used things like speed and direction, things that are inbuilt that we can modify. Now we're going to create our own variable. Really, really easy. All I'm going to do is create something called HP. Well, that was easy. However, HP needs an initial value, it needs a starting value. And I think it makes sense for us to have a HP starting of three. We're going to start with three. These mean nothing until you start doing things with them. So three makes sense, and we can assume that every time we get hit, we are going to lose one point of health. And once we get to zero, the game's going to be over. But if you've got a health uh, a HP, or you set up a system where you start with 100 health, your enemy could take off 10 or 15 or 20 or a random amount of health between a certain value. For our purposes right now, we're going to keep it simple. Three HP, which is going to give us three lives, three health points that we're going to use. I'm going to re-add re in that event that I just removed. So I am the spaceship checking for a collision with the enemy laser. And when I do collide with the enemy laser, it's going to be the exact same code that we had before. So just going back through this for good practice with the other thing, keeping in mind that the other thing is the enemy laser. We are going to destroy. Remember, destroy involves objects, which means it requires instances. We are going to destroy the other thing. Now, notice this is different to when the um, our laser touches the enemy because we don't want to destroy ourselves automatically. We don't want to restart the thing automatically. We always want to get rid of the enemy bullet, though, which is what we're doing there. The enemy laser, that will remove it. The key thing that we need to do here is to take our HP and minus equals 1 take one away from our HP. Now obviously if it starts with three, it's going to go down to two, then it's going to go down to one, then it's going to go down to zero. We then need to perform a check. And I'm going to do this. Sorry, my fault guys. I'm going to take that HP and I delete it from there. And I'm going to put it underneath the squigglies. HP minus equals one. Simply because I wouldn't want that to happen with the other thing. That would take the other thing's HP, which would be useful later, but not for what we're doing now. So we've taken HP down by one. What we're now going to do is ask the question, if our HP is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to restart the game. Again, remember that game is our keyword, and restart is what we want to have happen. So that's going to restart the game. With other, destroy that, and then we're going to lose the game after taking three hits. Let's see if that works. And we're going to show you a much better way of showing this. So I've taken a hit. I've taken a hit, I've taken a hit, the game has restarted. All well and good, but the user has no idea about that. They can't see that very clearly. What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can see that information for testing. And this is where debug comes in. You're going to encounter debug a lot. This is the red arrow next to the green arrow. Debug gives you all sorts of power. You can pause your game. Pausing is useful just for doing any testing. But what I now want to do is hover over my character. By hovering over my ID, a little piece of information appears over here in the bottom right hand side of this new tool that's appeared, which is our debug menu. If I hover over this, it gives me an ID of 1026. If I type in tools and go to local variables, because I'm looking at variables and looking at information, 1026. That tells me everything there is to know about this object. Its current position on screen, its x and y coordinates, what direction it's facing, what speed it's facing. 
other information to do with its sprites, other information to do with if it's following a path, and then finally at the bottom, after this final line, any variables we have created ourselves for it, including this one called HP. So now if I carry on and play the game once more, I take a hit, oh dear, take a hit and we can now see that that value has dropped down to 2 on the left hand side in the debug menu. I take another hit, brought down to 1, and then finally when I say the final hit, it'll be brought down to, go back to 3 because the game's restarted. This is very powerful and going for high grades you want to use the debug tool because it makes your life very easy. But we want some way of showing that information to the player. We want to show that and this is where the heads up display is going to come in. For the heads up display we're not going to need a sprite, we're merely going to need an object. It's going to have rules but no sprite. obj underscore hud for heads up display. Notice I've done that in capitals just because it stands for something. I'm going to add a new event and this is going to be the draw event. The draw event is something we haven't used so far and it's to do with displaying data on screen. Anything that we're going to code now will only work in the draw event. So I'm going to take a new piece of code and this piece of code is going to draw on screen the information that I want. Because it's to do with the draw event our keyword is going to be draw underscore draw underscore text bit slow, draw underscore text, and then it wants three parameters just as before. It wants to know where we want to draw it and what piece of text it wants us to show. I want to again draw it on my x, comma, on my y, comma, just as before, draw where I am. And then it wants to know the string of text, what piece of information it wants us to show. Now I want to know, I want to show HP. There's a problem. This object doesn't have a HP, and that's what it's trying to talk to. Talk to my HP. I want to say go to spaceships HP. In order to do that, I need to say its name, obj underscore spaceship dot. And what that does is it goes to the spaceship and retrieves its HP. It gets that piece of information. The other thing that we're going to face just for the time being is the text color is going to be wrong. Draw underscore circle clear ellipse. I'm looking for set color. There we go. Draw underscore set color. The problem that we're going to have here is the color defaults to being black. Now, black text on a black background isn't going to work very well. So what it wants to know is the color. You've got a bunch of predefined ones, and we're going to use the predefined ones. And the way you do that is C underscore. If it identifies it's the color, then I'm going to identify yellow. I want the yellow colour. So that's going to set it to yellow. Notice I'm doing this before I'm drawing it. And then I'm going to make sure that in my level, on my level 1, that object, which is object hood, is going to be placed at the top. It gives me an icon, which is a small little blue dot, to say this has no sprite. And I can see that it's displaying a 3, then it's displaying a 2, then it's displaying a 1, then it's displaying back to 3 because the game's restarted. So that's useful, but still not great. We can polish that up a little bit further. What I'm currently saying inside of that instruction is draw my HP. But what I can also say, HP is, notice that I'm doing this in quotes and that it's gone blue. These are double quotes which are shift and two on your keyboard. This is a piece of information that will be displayed. I'm also going to put a plus after that. The plus doesn't mean add. Whenever we're dealing with text, it means also display. Now I want to show you potentially an issue here if it forces it forces this error. Error messages are powerful. They're not things that have broken, they're things that we can go and fix. This tells us that this used to work before, this section of code here, but no longer does. This is why it's a bit of a more advanced feature, because I'm trying to display a piece of text followed by a number, and a number is not text, it's a number. Before this was fine, but now we're trying to combine two pieces together, we need to say, okay, force it to be a piece of text. The way that text is referred to in programming is a string, it's a string of characters, one thing after another. So now I've done convert this number into a string, and then it can be added to this string of text. Now I'm just going to leave that on the screen just for a second, so you can see all that's going on in there. We're saying draw text, x, y, where we are. I'm displaying a message. I want to say the words HP is followed by a comma, sorry, followed by a colon, followed by a space, and then also display my HP, which is stored as string this time. You'll notice it seems like we've got two end brackets as well, but we haven't. 
I've got that one, you can drag select and that just highlights its partner, which is over there, that one there, and I've got that one that marries up with that one there. Very useful again to be aware of that. Let's see if that's any better. So HP is three. It's getting better. It's getting far better as we progress. You can put that obviously wherever you like on screen. It's just a regular object. You can right click on it to delete it, or you can put it wherever you like. I think top works well. So, so far we're displaying our health. We're not going to do health meters or health bars at this stage. We're going to save that for later on. But for now, we do see that that is a value. Now we're going to do enemy health. This is going to work almost identically to how we had it before. The first thing is the enemy must have some HP. I'm going to give those just two for now. And this is identical to what we did with our player. You'll notice that HP, that it's the same variable, but because it belongs to the enemy and the enemy isn't the spaceship and there's lots of different types of enemy, we can have different ones. So HP equals two. What we're now going to say here is when the laser touches the enemy, we're going to change the code that's already here. We're still going to destroy, select enemy objects and destroy enemy objects. Now we don't want to do that anymore quite as much, do we? We want to wrap that whole thing in an if statement. We want to wrap that in if the, oh, this is going to be interesting actually. This is where with is going to be useful. With other, take the other things HP and minus that by one. Now, because this is in the other section, it's taking the other thing's HP, and the other thing is the enemy. And then destroy the other thing, and that's going to be if. Because this is all in that other section, this should work fine. If HP less than or equal to zero, only then are we going to do that. And you see, this is becoming quite convoluted and messy. So what I'm going to do is use tab just to move these things across so I can see that that includes all of these instructions and these are just the instructions to do with that if there. Let's see what that's done. Now it should take two hits to destroy our enemy rather than just one. So I've hit that one almost on the end. Let's see if that actually do destroy. There we go. It's taking two hits to remove our enemies. And we can see that clearly. So, so far, so good. Um, I'm going to put that back on screen just for a second because it was quite a bit that we just did. But you can clearly see what's going on with the other thing. Take the other thing's HP down by one. If the other thing's HP is less than or equal to zero, destroy the other thing. Remember, because we're all inside of this section. Again, you can just drag and select to see where the ends and the starts are. So within the other section, it's all to do with the other object. We could have put this instruction all to do in the enemy like we did before, but I've chosen to keep it in the laser just to show you a different way of doing it. The last thing I want to show you is spawn points. All this is going to do for now is be a spawn, so obj underscore spawn works just like a, a heads up display. It's not going to have any sprite, just going to have an instruction. And what this instruction is going to do is have a wait time. It's going to wait for a period of time spawn something and then start waiting again. Spawn something, wait, spawn and wait. You can use this same technique in your uh, shooting for the enemy if you want to. So when the spawn is created, it is going to set an alarm. An alarm is obviously just some sort of trigger. Now it wants to know which number of alarm because you can have lots of them. Computers start by counting at zero rather than one, so I'm going to use the first alarm that's available, the first free alarm. This is literally just like an alarm clock that you'd have on the side of your bed. Alarm zero. And I'm going to say wait for two seconds. 60, uh, 30 FPS, so 30 is obviously 60. It's just going to wait. That is all it's going to do when the game starts is wait. And then an event is wait for an alarm to go off. And it says, well, which alarm do you want? Well, I've just created alarm zero, so I'm going to wait for alarm zero. When alarm zero goes off, it is going to create an instance, just like we've done before, instance underscore create. It is then going to spawn where I am. So my X, my Y, and the object it's going to spawn is obj underscore enemy. And then we're going to set the alarm again. So it's going to go on forever. Alarm zero, 
equals 60. So every two seconds it will make a new enemy wherever we place this spawn point. And it really is that simple. So I'm going to put one just above the other row and let's see what that does. So one, two, another enemy, one, two, enemy, one, two, enemy, one, two, there we go. So it's spawning enemies constantly. And again, this is the difference between going from alpha, which is the game works, to beta, which is making sure is it actually now possible. And because I can spam the button, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Either way, it's an interesting challenge. I think it's a little bit too challenging. Let's just see if I can uh, spam where the spawn point is. There we go. So we can see that it works. We've got the functional mechanics in there. So that's heads up display. You can display any piece of information you want, but I've demonstrated how that works for piece of information that we've created. And that needs to live in drawer events. And I've also shown you how you can do player health, enemy health, and enemy spawn points. So very well done. Hope it's all worked for you.